Thank you for joining us. Has anyone joined us? No. <laughs> Here we are in Grand Marais. Beautiful sunny day. I'm um, out here demonstrating at North House, uh, working on basketry. Today we're working with birch bark and I'm gonna go through the steps of making these little tool wrap sheaths. A few other exciting things going on. In the blacksmith shop, people have been building boats. Just to give the full tour. Uh, we've got some bulrushes drying, along with some cattails and some grasses, all for use in different kinds of basketry. Or perhaps duck decoys. Coming up on duck hunting season. But um, yeah, here's the basketry zone. Today's theme is birch bark. So these little sheets are super, they can be super simple, you can make them more elaborate and more decorative if you want to, but it's, it's great when you have your sharp scissors kicking around in a bag, or any tool, to have them protected. Um, you know, there's a spring pair of side cutters, the sheath just keeps them, keeps them in there, but sharp points, um, good to keep your tools protected. So things can be as simple and straightforward or more elaborate. And we'll go through making a pretty simple version and a slightly more elaborate version. And this is all done with birch bark and I've seen people do it with other types of bark. Um, what all could you do this with? I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I haven't done it with anything else, but it'd be good to try. Anything that's that's sturdy and bendable. Um, I also see people covering knives with this. I think that that's, great for like a knife that might be on a shelf or in a tool bag or something like that. Um, there's not like a wooden insert in here or anything so I would hesitate maybe to put that knife on my belt or in my pocket but um, but for yeah, any other tools this works great. So I'm not going to talk too much about the birch bark and where it comes from. A really great way to learn about that um, maybe like a month ago I did another video so you can dig back in the North House video archives and see if you can learn a little bit about where the birch bark comes from. Or, I believe two weeks from now, I could be wrong, check out the North House calendar to see when basket week is. But there's gonna be a bunch of great basketry videos in a bunch of, talking about all kinds of materials and weaving styles. And someone is sure to talk about birch bark and harvest and where we get material for that. Um, I believe that's two weeks from now. So, just a really quick overview. Um, this is the side of the tree that we recognize and know that's on the outside. This is the inside part closest to the wood. But um, I'm working with, this is, this is the, from a pretty small tree. So this is just the width of the bark that I have. And I was making some sheets with it this morning that happened to be the perfect size for these scissors. If you had much longer bark, um, well, let me just cut a piece and I'll show you how it folds up and then I'll tell you how you can measure what length you're going to need. But I'm just going to take a straight edge on a cutting board here. And I'm just going, you know, a bit wider than the tool that I want to, to cover. So this is still quite thick. I'm gonna thin it out a little bit. Some birch bark splits easy and some does not. And that's just a characteristic of that specific tree. This splits wonderfully. So I'm just gonna remove some of those papery bits. Yeah, you can go to behind the dockside building, or the, the fish market, the red building, straight that way. Yeah, behind the fish market, the little red Kay. building. Um, so, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to fold this in half.
So there's what we got. So I needed a piece of bark that was four times the length of my finished piece, which in this case, that bark that I had is perfect. That's how we're going to fold it. We also need one piece for the wrapping. So I want to use bark that's a little bit longer because that's going to be like our, our kind of like our stitching. So I've got this piece of bark from a little bit of a bigger tree. And this I just like to cut by eye just because I'm cutting a narrow. It's nice if you take great care and cut it really straight and uniform. And I'm not great at doing that. I think it all looks okay anyway. Okay, so again, we've got some pretty thick bark here. I want it to be thinner. So I'm just gonna, gonna dig my nail in there and find the layer that I want. This can be pretty thin. Um, I really like this. This has been kicking around for some number of years. See, it's kind of shiny. That's just from, from using it and handling it and touching it, birch burkle pick up the oils on your hands and that helps keep it conditioned and pliable over time. Um, but yeah, this is just like thin, pretty scrappy stuff that was used for that. Okay. I mean, it's nice to even it out if you've got some real crazy stuff going on. So um, you can just work with it. I like to put just a little bit of oil on it because we're kind of kind of stitching with it and that just helps it slide through a little bit easier. So here's my piece. Remember how we folded it first in half and then each of these pieces down. So it's it's pretty simple. It seems like there should be more of a trick to this, but we're actually just gonna set this. So right in here is where our tool is gonna go. So these spaces are where we're gonna weave. We're never gonna weave in the middle where our tool is gonna go. Um, but we're just gonna go kind of kind of an over under type thing but I'm gonna hide this in that little pocket and I'm gonna wrap around the whole thing on the outside so I just went around the outside once and now I'm gonna go Instead of just wrapping the whole thing again, we're going to poke through that space. And now on the other side, we're going to go through, through that space again. So we did a big over, and now we're going under. Under, meaning under these big flat pieces. Okay, and now we're gonna go over all the way around. And then under. My unders are through these loops, never through that very center part. Karen Nelson has a question. Uh, she's asking what kind of oil you use. 
You know, you can use anything. A lot of people will just use a little bit of vegetable oil. This is some really great hand salve that I've been using that has great um, things for wound healing, which I need right now. Uh, <laughs> it's just some stuff that a friend made and I have it with me and I just need a little bit. So I'm just kind of using it in my work. Um, but really anything. Often I'll mix beeswax with vegetable oil for basketry. Uh, you can just use, yeah, just straight oil, but I like when you can like pick up your oil. Um, that just feels nice. So, under. Under. Look at that. I goofed. So we're kind of making this staggered pattern. So this one went over, under, over, under. So there I needed to go over again. Oops, I was talking. Over. Over. So we're making stripes. row. Um, what do you, I think we're going to have enough length on this to finish it, but what if, what if our piece of bark was too short? What if we ran out? Um, what I would do then would be I would just take the new piece and overlap it back a little ways so that the two are running together for a moment. And then off you go. You also could use other material for this wrapping part. I've seen people wrap it with spruce root or a thin black ash splint. Kind of makes a nice different aesthetic. So I kind of, I kind of, um, because I was showing you how to add in, I, I'm a little bit short now. So I'm just going to go ahead and end it. Um, it's nice to not weave it all the way up to the very, very top because you do want to have a little bit of give at the top. So it's not pinched so tight. Um, but to end it, I just take it and put it through there, through the hole again, to the inside. And I try to get it to come out, let's see here. I try to get it to come out down somewhere. Just pinch it in there. Yeah, and just hide the end, the great, the great weaving trick. So I've got a little tail coming out there, and I'm just going to snip it to finish it up. So this, I mean, honestly, I maybe would have gone another one or two rows up, but for demonstration purposes, there it is. Um, so, so that was pretty quick, right? You know, if you had a wider strip, it'd be going even quicker. Perfectly functional, um, and then uh, one thing that you can do that I've seen too, if you want a little bit of extra protection in there, you can just slip another. Might be a little bit wide. We're gonna just slide an extra piece of bark in there, or if it's a little bit loose, maybe if the sizing was wrong, this would help tighten it up a bit. a lot tighter. So there's that. So if you want to make it a little bit more decorative, which I mean we're doing even though this is super simple, you know, if you if you didn't care at all 
you know, maybe you'd use some cardboard and tape, which is a perfectly functional way to protect your tools. But since we are going through all the trouble to make this with birch bark, um, let's go on to doing something like this. And then you can use your imagination to figure out how to get from there to here or any other design that you might want. So I have some pre-cut pieces. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and fold it. So this is a little bit of review. First we go in half, and I crease it. And then fold both of those halves to the center. So we're going to make a, a slit just on these two outside faces of the bark. So see my four segments. These two are going to be on the inside. Kathleen is wondering if this would work for Hilvi carving knives. I don't know those carving knives, but I imagine yes. I think so. I And I said earlier um, that I see people make knife sheets with this style of, of covering and you probably could make some ooh, some kind of wooden insert <laughs> um, you probably could make some kind of wooden insert or something but like for something that you're gonna wear on your body it's good to make sure that it's really protected and not gonna your sheath isn't gonna be made of a material that your knife can just poke through um, So we've got these four sections. So these are the two sections that I want to make that slit in. And I don't want to make a slit that goes all the way through everything. I'm just going to slit it part way. Line that up kind of down the middle. So there's the top of my sheath. There's that bottom fold and the other top of the sheath. So I'm just going to make a line. Part way through. Again, we'll start from the bottom. I'm gonna make a little point on this. It's one the end that we stitch with. So same thing. These two holes are where we're gonna be weaving in and out of, along with around the outside. Never, never putting our weaver in the middle there. I'm just gonna send that through. Wrap it all the way around once. And now I've got two sections here. So now we're weaving over and under. We're going to make it staggered. And you can just pick one thing. I'm going to start with going over and then under. Doesn't matter. Over, under, over. Under. Keep adjusting, making sure your lines look nice. All right, so now we gotta do the opposite of what we did last time. So that was over. Now we're gonna go under and then over. Teresa Durkee asked if this could be a tiny purse. Oh, hi mom. Um, you know what? I have seen them, if you are a follower of Birch Bark Beth on the Instagram, um, Beth Homa Kraus, she makes these beautiful things in this style that hold like your credit cards. So just like a little card holder style with a lot of really cool variations in this slit design. So it, it wouldn't have a lot of strength as like something to carry, but you could put like little, little wallet type, a little wallet type holder. And 
Kathleen is asking if the weaver is um, bi-directional, if it has a natural curve. Mm. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by bi-directional, but here's what I'll say is there are lenticels in the bark. This is an important thing that I missed, so thank you, Kathleen. Um, there are lenticels in the bark, these little lines. And what are lenticels? I can't tell you specifically other than that. It is something that helps the tree breathe, take in, mm, I don't know. I don't know how to speak about that in the correct terms. But anyways, so there's these lenticels and we wanna make sure to cut our, those are also weak spots. So we wanna make sure to cut our weaver that long way running with the lenticels because, so there's our lenticels going that way. If we bend it, Oh wow, this is nice pliable bark. There. <laughs> they want to crack on the lenticels. <laughs> um, and then also uh, for this, you, you could use either side of the bark, if that is another another question. I'm choosing to put this yellow side out because it's the stronger side, but either one is totally doable. Um, you could use really scrappy bark for this and it would probably work just fine. Um, I've also heard people say, so this like, is slightly fancier looking, I think, than this, but I've also heard that maybe this is easier to figure out in your mind. It's just easier to like see the over-under pattern, I guess. So we just went over, so now we're going to go under. I'm just kind of prying the bark with my fingers, but you could use a, like a nice tapered stick to help you lift, lift the bark where you want it. Sometimes I go for less tools, but tools are really helpful. Yeah, like right here. A tapered stick looks like it needs a little work. And you can play around with different things like cutting this strip um, quite a lot wider, like the same width as each of these segments to make a bit more of a checkerboard pattern. All sorts of different ideas I've seen. just asked if this demo will be posted somewhere later. I just wanted to say that um, all of these live Lunch and Learns are posted on the North House uh, Facebook page, so if you want to go back and follow along later, you're able to do that. top gets a little tight and the bark I was talking about the lenticels so when you have this slit in there um, this one I was kind of messing with it and that slit just ran all the way to the top which is fine it's still a perfectly functional sheath but um, here's where you gotta be a little bit careful I'm getting close to the top there so I'm gonna go ahead and end it now because we're getting close and I am running out and I don't want to add in another piece because I'm just so close so same thing where I'm going to, I'm going to poke it to the center and I'm just going to dive down at an angle, see if I can get that to come out somewhere. Yeah. 
somewhere below, you know, just right there. That might stay. I mean, it's just in there straight, but it's nice if you can get it to tuck down at an angle somewhere. Are sheathed. Any final questions? Liz asked, um, where can you get a birch bark if you don't have a tree? Hmm. That's a great question. And I don't know anyone who sells the raw material. So um, this so this bark, it's like super nice and tidy looking. I harvest from living trees. Um, I use a lot of bark for classes and things like that, so it makes a lot of sense. I haven't done a lot of work with, actually, this is kind of cool. So this is bark from a dead tree. See how different it looks? Like there's just a lot of colors and different things going on. And you can totally get bark from downed stuff on the ground. Uh, and will it work? The answer is maybe. You pick it up, you try to thin it out, you see if it's flexible. Um, and it might be, and I've seen really gorgeous baskets and things made with down to tree bark because it just hangs on there the wood rots away but the bark is I mean it just keeps going um, not all of it maybe you'll pick it up and it'll be brittle and, and not work so so that's a good I think it's it's good to just try to go find some too um, but I don't know anybody who would like who sells the materials unless sometimes if you're in a workshop or a class um, sometimes the instructor might have excess materials and you also mentioned earlier that you could use the same technique with other materials. Right? Yeah. I've never done this with other materials, but I know that I've seen it. Um, I think I've seen it with cedar bark and possibly black ash, which would make a really nice strong. That'd be awesome. But yeah, other, other basketry type materials. Um, but I mean, you could do that with all kinds of stuff, you know, anything that, that uh, like paper bends like this, but paper, you know, it's just gonna poke through. So the idea with these two is not that it's got like a big, strong, sturdy end that your tool will not penetrate, but these are just tightly fitted. So the tip of my scissors isn't even necessarily down there, but you know, the tip is maybe back in here, but it just has a nice tight hold on it. Um, so yeah, anything. I don't know, you could probably use some sort of like thin plastic or other kind of found material. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of different basketry materials would certainly be worth a go. Great, thanks so much, Emily. And yeah. uh, if you joined us late, you can catch the whole video uh, online when I post it shortly. Thanks for joining us.